Welcome back, folks. Take a look over here. We have the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. You know, so every morning I, I look at the newsletters, just seeing what's going on. I, uh, I, I proofread some of them. And uh, Basil's is always, I, I love it, right? He's informative. He, he writes enough to get it across, but it's concise as well, okay? You can try this for 30 days. Uh, you don't like it for whatever reason. I can't imagine why, but you can get your money back. Uh, Mr. Basil, are you there? Hi, how are you? Doing all right. How are you doing? Jacob, it's good to hear you at this hour. I'm, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Basil. It's good to have you on. Thank you. So what do we got looking at so today? You were, talking about, you were talking about my newsletter, and what's really interesting is that in the, in the Champ Wave, uh, the concept that I originally founded way, way back when I was hand charting with pencil and ruler on engineer paper, was that if I identified the lowest low bar, if there were four peaks, that is each higher peak was alphabetized, peak A, then the next peak, which starts the leg, starts a penny above the left side, peak A, it starts leg B, then it makes a peak B, et cetera, until it gets to D, the fourth highest peak. That essentially over the years has developed so that I, I take it from a buy signal upgrade it to a buy mode and applies that it should go to at least a peak D. That's the core. At D, other things can happen. So what's interesting here, especially since I'm on with you at this particular time at what is a 3.20 on the Tuesday, the day before Fed meeting, this is the 13th of June, we've got a leg C. And uh, for subscribers, we are long. We're actually long from this low right here in the uh, October loan. This is the weekly chart of the Dow. We're along the Dow Diamonds, that's the one to one long, and we're along the three times long. We've held it, even though that's really just a trading position, but it's, it's, we, we've managed the stops of held, it's been very good. And we've added to it on the way up, we've even shortened it, but we've lately, about a week ago, we added to it. And here we are in leg C. So this is the difficulty at C with a Fed meeting, you say, is this it? Why, why, the, the, irony of the whole thing is mm. that if all the technicals are good and this daily chart shows you that the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, is really strong. The stochastic is really strong at 94%. On balance volume, this blue line is lagging a little bit. And I'm going to show you something in, in a moment or two. Pre moving averages over the 14. I mean, everything that you want is exactly here for a buy mode to continue. So we are waiting, regardless of what happens with the Fed, we're waiting for maybe a pullback and then a, a perhaps a minor high towards the 34,000, uh, today's high, 34,310, maybe, you know, above to get your leg D. And then we've got to be careful. Now, what's interesting is in the weekly chart, we've already got a leg D, even though it's technically under this last uh, April. Oh, was that? I'm sorry, is that uh, April? That was the December the week of the 16th of December, that peak at, uh, in the 34,700s, this is still in, in the waveform, it's in D. So there are a couple of things that are going on. So we've got the the Dow in leg C. Uh, you were mentioning just a moment ago, oh, what was the stock? Did I write it down? You were talking about it, and I thought, oh, that's a great example. Let me see if I can see it in my list of of stocks that we um, we were looking at AEM, STLD, AMD. Uh, yes, STLD. That's right. Uh -huh. so it's a steel dynamics, if yeah. I'm correct, right? Yes. Steel dynamics. So steel to STLD. Where is it? Let's see it's here. Only we're... in a leg B in the daily chart, and the MACD is good. The stochastics actually at 82 percent. On balance volumes lagging, but the red little gray line. Is, is improving the weekly chart doesn't look great and the monthly chart uh -huh. has had a huge pullback from its, its peak e but it's still acting very well so here i am and i'm saying okay well i'm getting a little cautious because the tech sector and i'll show you this here we have uh, in the tech sector we have a stock i've spoken about very often when i've been interviewed by tom for weeks now i've been saying we have a stock called symbiotic inc it's in the uh, AI, the artificial intelligence, robotic warehouse automation systems. And we're long from the uh, 21s. And wow. it's actually now more than double. It hit 47 <laughs> yeah. today. But 
I want you to say, so in the one area, now look at the on little blue line, the unbalanced volume. It's the exact opposite of something like a caterpillar or your, your SDD, which is uh, steel dynamics. Yeah. Look, caterpillar is in leg E, but the, the, the stochastic strong, but the unbalanced volume is lagging. So I in my show this morning, and I'll do that again tomorrow in my show at 10 o'clock, I, what I want you to emphasize was that this is a rotational market and that somehow or other that whole uh, artificial intelligence area could, in fact, we also have bots, which is B-O-T-Z is the symbol. This, this is uh, Global X Robotics and AI ETF. The, the weekly is a little extended. It's in leg E. If you look at the technicals, look at that on-balance volume. Everything else is fantastic, but the on-balance volume says, just be ready for some kind of a pullback. Just a pullback, uh -huh. not a smash, but a pullback. The daily says the same thing. So why, the way I'm looking at the market right now, and I should also mention we are long uh, this uh, from the 24s is at 20. You there, Basil? Looks like we might have lost Basil for the time being. We'll try to get him back. Earned rest and oh. those. There he is. <laughs> oh, you lost me. Am I back? Yeah, we're, you're back, okay, Basil. Sorry. We can hear you. What I was saying is that I think that we've got a rotational correction that is possible coming up. And that means that some of the sectors that have done really well take a bit of a breather. And the sectors that are like in the cyclical, as I just showed you, Caterpillar, like you just mentioned, uh, STLD, which is Steel Dynamics, that area starts to see some strength. That's the way this market works so often that when one sector takes a breather, the sectors that were lagging start to play catch up. So I'm kind of intrigued. And as I say, we got, we got to be a little careful. We are at C in a chapter way we expect a D, but this is where I start to get a little bit cautious just on the shorter term, the daily charts, the weekly charts actually are all, all the broadening of the market rally has extended enough for me to say, I think that the market could cope with some negative news from the Fed. Sure. But at the same time, it's really important to be a little careful in the sectors that have really run to the upside in an extreme way. Fascinating. Fascinating. And, and so tomorrow you're going to go over that a little bit more, right? I'm curious what you're looking at with the blue line. We only got about 45 seconds left. But are you looking for that so, convergence where, where it converges no. with the other stochastics, or how are you looking at that? No, the blue line is a completely independent thing. Uh, Joe Granville, years ago, we used ah. to add up the price. It's a running total of a bar that closes up. You add it you add the run, to the running total of the volume, and if it's down, you, you subtract it. It's a very simple technique. Once they pulled, made it a line, and you didn't have to do that calculation, it's fantastic. So I'll talk about that tomorrow. It's almost independent of everything else. This is the only thing I use as an overbought and oversold signal. The others can keep going a lot longer than your patience. Fascinating. <laughs> Basil, thank you so much. We'll definitely tune in tomorrow, 10 Eastern time. Basil, thank you thank so much. Thank you very much, Jacob. Bye now. Have a oh. great afternoon and evening.